Hey guys, Gaius Hennon here at the Shelter Institute. We are on day two of our Woolwich build. We've brought another load of timber to the site. We're gonna start building the back half of the timber frame, 24 by 24. What if we built our bents over there? Oh, nice. In which case, I'll set the joist right here and then swing the beams over there. That way we don't have to, we just don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Mess with all of this stuff. So today our objective is to try and get these two timber frames largely done so that tomorrow we can actually start installing gypsum and get started installing sips as well. Part of the crew was installing decking on the second floor and when that operation is going on there's not really anything we can do to that timber frame. So we let the decking crew run in peace and the rest of us worked on assembling the back half of the timber frame and getting that into place. It's really just a matter of keeping ourselves organized and moving forward in a in an orderly manner. Waxy. Well, yeah, these ones are oily and flick. And that goes there. So we should be swinging that. Four, six. I'm just trying to see if it turns around. Got dovetails on both sides. Needs to come towards me. Yeah. Back towards you. I think this tenon is way too big. Let me just try this. Let me slick it down a little bit. All right, look to me like this is the problem. Oh. Look to the line here, but this oh. chub inside. Yeah. Yeah. Chub. Chub. go, theoretically. Super tight. Whoo! Tap this in just a little bit there. Wanna give me a hand with this one? Looks like it's got to come some more though, Clayton. Is that all you got? No. <laughs> okay. Not do anything? I think it's the braces, to be honest with you. All right, coming apart. What well, part needs to be trimmed here? This part of the tenon. Often when you, when you look at it, you can see that the tenon is a little bit proud of the shoulder. See how that's just sticking out just a tiny bit? You just want to bring it back flush to the, thank you. This is kind of interesting, I can see. I was having hard contact here. They actually pulled some sawdust out of the mortise. Okay, let's try that. Looking good, yep.
Okay. Beautiful. Now I'm happy. What do you think, though? You glad you came? Yeah. So much fun at the job site, isn't it? During the assembly yesterday and today, we were using one of our favorite tools, the Lug All. Come along, it's a steel cable puller with an aluminum body. It's very lightweight. It's a two ton puller. We will use that to pull the different elements of the timber frame together nice and tight, and then we will drill and peg. And we do that because we're working with green timber and it's very important when we're assembling two pieces of wood that are green that we actually compress the side grain of one of the pieces so that as the wood's excess moisture leaves and the wood is allowed to shrink, we don't get a gap opening up. Our preferred method to get that side grain compression is that come along. So all throughout the day when we're assembling a beam into a post, for instance, we will put a strap around the outside of the post with blocks behind it so that we don't cut into the post. And then we'll use that steel puller to get a very nice tight fit in conjunction with some tapping from a 16 pound sledgehammer. So we apply heat, as we call it, which is that tension with the come along. And then once that is very tight, we'll take a sledge and hit the back side of the post. And that really sets it tight onto the beam. And that's how we're able to get that side grain compression that ensures that our joinery looks tight in two or three years when the timber frame is nice and dry. If you'd like to learn more about it, check out this video. You'll notice as you look at the joinery that we're assembling, the hole through the post has already been drilled. And then when we insert the wind brace in, we drill just through the wind brace tenon. We do it that way because in the shop we can get much more precise about laying out that hole and pre-drilling it. And it makes this process much faster at the job site. Yeah. Hey, what's up? <laughs> there's just, there's no decking the rest of the way through there. Right, that's all open up to there. Yeah, there is going to be a pass through on the second floor, but I don't believe we're putting any decking up there. Treat them as two different structures, and then there'll be a wall and ceiling framing in between here that'll be put in. Probably put over some decking boards or whatever the finished floor is. We'll go over the top, sort of bridge that gap there. But these two are going to be separated. Like, there's just one door going through. It's not like it's all open there. That's what I wanted to hear. Okay. Thanks so, for telling me what I wanted to hear. No problem. What? I mean, do you see the size of that thing? I wonder where he's from. Uh, I don't, I don't like it, Ethan. Yep. You're gonna wanna lay that out. Okay. It's eight by eight. Eight inches, and then this is a uh, half inch shy. Okay, on each side. Potatoes. Okay. So if you just lay that out, then you'll have something to knock around. Got it. Why is this such a slow process?
hold the ladder. Okay. All right, it's gonna come back to me. All right, let me go high. That look tight on that side? It's very tight. Yeah. All right. After lunch, the decking crew was done with timber frame number one. This is another thing that's probably confusing because I've been referring to them as two separate buildings. It looks like, oh, this is one timber frame. And it is, but from a use perspective, I see them differently, even though they are joined. We were able to move onto that second floor space and assemble the dual ridge beams, get those up into place while the decking crew worked on putting decking on timber frame number two. And then we were also able to set the rafters for that timber frame this afternoon. It's a much simpler roof system, so that was easy to do. All right, I'm bringing this lopsided beam in. Beam coming over the top, fellas. there's not page in front here is there still somebody we're working on it okay we just got it positioned what are you doing i'm just seeing a bunch of slacking for what's going on all right okay moving great ethan only an inch to go three quarters Whoa, three eighths. Eighth. I mean, you're home. The dormer's definitely on that side, right? Definitely on that side. This is our last chance to fix it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, coming up. How's it looking, Ethan? Looking good. Everyone have a clean hole? Yep. Yeah, it started just barely though. 
Are you, are you down, Coy? No, not quite. Are you hitting anything? Uh, yeah. Okay. That'll help us. All right, so this is started, but it's the hole in the flooring is misaligned, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to pick this up, but we'll give it a whirl. Okay, coming up, it might spring a little bit, so just be wary. This one needs to be cut back to the line, essentially. Right where they put the line is where we actually want it to be cut to. Yeah, that both sides have to be taken off. Seventy-five eighths. Yeah, we gotta get rid of this tongue. Typical flooring guys. They're like, ah, the timber framers will fix that. Like, take two will be smooth as butter. Yeah, wait till we get this fixed, Mike. Take two, coming at you. So if you guys can get it rocking back and forth, it will slowly work its way down in. Yeah, I think this one's now started too. All right, I think you got it, feller. I think we're just gonna get her plumbed and start putting some weight on it. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull this back, Coy, so we can see. Keep pulling it back that way. engaged pretty well here. All right. I think we can plumb it. <clears throat> Good.
The top plate's over there. Yeah, I yeah. think Gabe is. Okay. Got me hooked on. Got her. Beautiful. So, this is the outside face of this one. The other one's already opposite. If you want to just put that one here, so you don't have to spin it. How does it look under for the staircase opening? It looks great. There's a little bit of dirt, but we can wipe that off. I think that is the superior okay. plate. Are you gonna swing these rafters before those rafters? Uh, yes. These rafters first. Yes, those. When you said these, I was like, no. I just got really confused, so I got quiet. It's my go-to move. Peel that out to the side. Swinging this rafter by you, George. Okay. All right, you're clear. These timber frames aren't touching. Do we need two wedding bushes or what? I think the protocol is one when the final rafter goes up. I'm just saying they're not connected. They are. You should see this connector. Okay. It's on you. Okay. I'll take it. Just like that. It's going to go one in, at four feet in. So, we got the roof coming tomorrow. I yep. kind of been thinking that they would put the roof on that slab mm -hmm. to keep it out of our way. Uh, but I think the reality is that we might as well open the roof all up and prep it, mm -hmm. and then I can pick it up and move it there. And the reason I'm having this conversation with you is that I'm thinking we would build these porch vents uh, on there one of them, you know, theoretically we know the length, is that right? Yes, and the other is wild. I believe so. No, 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 all the posts probably are. probably all wild, yeah. They're all wild, right. yeah. I forgot about that. Because I'm thinking, you know, maybe tomorrow we go get that timber frame and put it up. But as soon as we do that, we lose that nice space, but oh well. We'll build these in the driveway when the time comes. Yeah, I mean, we have tons of space. Yeah, yeah we do. Bit. Yeah, all right, so I'll, we'll just leave that for now. All right, so I'm gonna move that framing lumber so that I have a clear shot out of here and then we'll call it a day. Okay. You want to take this off? I think these straps we can leave up here because we'll want them tomorrow. Not supposed sure. to rain. Not supposed to rain? Not supposed to. I mean, who knows? Rusty, we're migrating tools down. Well, we had quite a day here today. <laughs> oh, hey guys, 
end of day two progress is right behind me. We had another fantastic day, tons of production. The weather has been cooperating. We're in Maine, it's beautiful. This morning before launch, we were very focused on getting this second timber frame built. This afternoon, to try and stay on schedule, we did start installing the gypsum that arrived. So once that's done, we're ready to install the SIP walls. Tomorrow, surprisingly, we have a big day coming. Tomorrow morning, we will start by setting the rafters on the first timber frame that we built. And we're also getting our first shipment of SIPs. The weather looks great for the rest of the week, so we don't have to worry about any rain or anything like that. So I hope you join us again tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and we really love you. <laughs> So thanks for following along today and we'll see you again tomorrow. If you've liked what you've seen in these videos and you're interested in timber framing but you're unable to attend one of our in-person classes, check out the link below to our online timber framing class. If you're interested in raising your own timber frame but don't have time to cut it, we do offer pre-cut kits that can be delivered right to your job site, ready to be assembled.